Shalom, good evening. The Shia this week um, is titled the, uh, the Setting for Leil Shabbos in Your Home, The Scene at Home on Leil Shabbos. We're going to start with trying to build up the scene of the creation of the world, Briyas HaOilam, and its impact on Kiddush on Leil Shabbos. I'd like to put in front of you scene number one, the first scene, the creation of the world. Let's start with the analysis of the Kuzari. The first is called the domain, inanimate objects, the sun, the moon, the planets, the galaxies, the stars. They all have a specific purpose to them and they all perform a certain per function. Let's maybe have a look at the, the words of the Rambam in Hilchas Yisodi HaToyra and Peyla Gimel, Halachotes. Kol HaKoychovim, the HaGalgalim, all the stars and all the planets, Kulam Baalei Nefesh, Vedea, Vehaskel Heim. They all have a nefesh, they have their own sense, their own thoughts. Veheim Chaim Veoimdim, they're alive and they continue, umakirin esmi shahoya vahoya oilam. And they recognize each of the planets, it's almost as if they have their own mind, and they recognize HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Kol echod veechod lefi godloi, ulefi ma'alosoi, meshabchim umefoarim leyoitzram, kamoi malochim. Each one of them prays HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and they're similar to malochim, the planets, the sun and the moon. Like they recognize Hashem, they also recognize themselves and their own abilities. And they know those malachim who are higher than them, what their capacity and their potential is, and they also know what's above them. But the knowledge and the seichel and the nefesh of the stars and the planets is less than that of Malachim of angels, of the Gedoyla Midas B'nei Adam, remarkable Rambam, but more than human beings. So they, they understand what they're doing. They're domain, but they seem to have a nefesh. They have their own path, which they continually follow. It's not a path like of water or like a fire, which just goes to a certain area or wind but they continually move on a certain orbit, like we know, the sun and the moon and the earth, and all the planets have a certain orbit, which means that they have a sense of direction and their own will of their own. And that's called recognizing HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and they perform. Maybe that's what we mean on Shabbos morning, when we say, literally, Smeichim b'tseisom v'sosim b'voyam, oisim b'eimo r'tsoin koinam. The stars, the, the planets, they all, they, the sun comes out at night, they're happy to do their work, their tafkid, their job that they are supposed to do. But so what Hashem wants them to do. The rain, the creation is based on the rain and the, the creation of wind, the oceans, the Atlantic Ocean, the Pacific Ocean, the Indian Ocean, the world of stone, which is a domain, an inanimate object, the Grand Canyon, the Rocky Mountains, the uh, Swiss Alps, the stone, the, the sand. These are all creations of HaKadosh Baruch, the Sahara Desert. The, they're all aspects of the Bria, which we must recognize in the, in the creation. Move up a bit. So a, a plant, a tree, a shrub, the flowers, gardens. The massive, enormous wheat fields in, in, the, in the Midwest, in America, Oklahoma, and all these, the, the, the area of, of growth in Russia and the plants, fruit, their taste, their color, the enormous number of, of trees and plants and flowers that there are in the world. It's a world by itself recognizing our Kodesh Baruch Hu. The world of Chai, of the animals, with each with their own individual features, the lion with his fierce behavior, uh, the deer which is so meek, a lamb, a dog, a cat, the numerous types of birds and fish and animals which there are in the world, and each with their own purpose in life, the cows for milk and the chickens and all the creation that there is, is a whole world of creation of, 
of, of chai, of animals. And then we come, according to the Kuz of his recognition, in the Bria Sa'olam, the recognition of the world, is the world of Odom. And actually the Kuz of he calls him the Medaber, someone who speaks. And that's the greatness of man, the Fima Halala, what he says, the Koyach of Odom. But just think of this one point, which is overwhelming in thought. Millions and millions of people, and not one person, and all of creation is similar to another person, each with their own features and personalities and weaknesses and strengths. The Gorn in Yeshaya, the Vilna Gorn, explains that each person has 70 koichas, memory, digestion, speech, hearing, thought, and all the comparison which men can do. It's all the creation of man and the Medaber and what he is able of doing. And of course, and higher than that, as the Briskorov explains, higher than a regular Medaber. A regular Medaber says, good morning, hello, can I have a cup of coffee? There's higher than that. There's the Oilam of Yisrael, who Medaber, who speak to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Mechal Kachayim Bechesed, Shema Yisrael, the Dvorim Sha'im Dim Beruma Sha'loilam, which stand at the height of the world. These are very high words. So there's a regular level of speech, which is a normal human being in China, in South America, in Australia. Everybody speaks, but there's higher than that the level of speech of a Jew. And so the realm of creation of HaKadosh Baruch or how he created the world, in very brief terminology, would be a domain, inanimate objects, like we said, stone and water and sand, earth, so meach, which is produce and trees and growth and plants, chai and all the animals and the fish and the birds which are in the world, and then there's a the human being, human nations. That's scene number one. Take a second scene. Man using his intelligence in the world. Meaning, the whole world of manufacturing, the world of business, the world of science, the world of education, the world of libraries, of books, the world of music, the world of food. Man has created and taking the raw materials as much as he can, whatever he can, and he uses them. And he maximizes on what he can do, what he can take, what he can get. These are all enormous areas of development which come from man. So that, maybe that's the second scene which I wanted you to give, I want you to appreciate. Why am I saying that? Just with those two scenes, move on now to the home of a Jew on Friday afternoon. The house has been cleaned, the wife is preparing the food, the candles are put out, the children get dressed and everybody gets ready for Shabbos, a tablecloth is put on the table, and you're ready to be receive Shabbos Kodesh. It is, in terminology of the world, of the creation, it is the most spectacular 20-25 minutes which takes place in the home of a Jew. Let's have a look at the words. What are you celebrating when you make Kiddush? Vayechulu hashomayim v'ho'oretz v'choltz v'on And all that we just mentioned in the creation, the world of animals, the world of vegetation, everything that Hashem created in the world, including man, and man's own aspects of and man's own development in the world, it was all finished. The word tzvo'om, the Ramban explains, it says that tzvo, the hosts on the ground, animals, human beings, the creation, and there's a tzvo, there's a, a the host in Shomayim, the stars, the planets, and of course the Malachim as well. Everything was finished when it came to before sunset on Friday afternoon. And he completed all his work that he had to do, and he rested. The end. Stop. And he gave a brocha for that particular day at sunset as the next day begins. And he sanctified it. It has a holiness to it. It's not like Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday. Saturday becomes Shabbos Kodesh, and it has a, a complete distinctive Kedusha to it. 
מכל מלאכת אשר בורא, אשר בורא אלוקים לעשות, which he had made, famous analysis we should add in of the Ramban on the word לעשות and into the future as well, that each day of creation as it's recorded in Bereshus corresponds to a thousand years. And the first two thousand years were toihu vavaihu, were empty. There was light, and it refers to the light of Adam Arishain. Then we move on to the growth of vegetation in the world. Tzmicha, the growth, refers to Avraham Avinu, the next three thousand years. And then the lights refer to the first base of Mikdash, the second, four thousand, third thousand, the four thousand, until we reach the fifth thousand, which is Yishu Tzu Hamayim, which is the fifth day, which corresponds with the development of all the nations of the world without recognizing HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And then as we are at the moment in the period of the end of the fifth thousand coming into the sixth, which is the time of the Mashiach, says the Ramban, and then the seventh day, which is Shabbos, represents Olam Habo. Uh, but these all, it's all inside Vayichul. What exactly is the Chagiga, the celebration which we make before sunset, Shkia time, on Friday afternoon? It's the recognition that HaKadosh Baruch Hu created everything. The whole world of animals, of vegetation, the world of what man has accomplished and everything that man has done. The purpose of making Kiddush on Leil Shabbos is that we testify, we recognize, and we make a celebration about it, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu created everything, and He benched it, by Yavorech HaLokim, by Yekadesh HaYisoy, Kibo Shabbos, because He rested. And that is a very, very powerful, significant act which takes place in the house of a Jew every single Friday afternoon. How important is it? I'd like to read from you different statements from the Gemara in Shabbos, that Kuf Yotes. And the Gemara describes exactly what does it mean making Kiddush in your home on Shabbos. The Omar Rav HaMununa says Rav HaMununa Call out Mispal of the Erev Shabbos. Anybody who davens on Erev Shabbos, the Oimer Vayechulu, and he says Vayechulu, I should explain that the Vayechulu that we say at home on a case of wine, on a Becha, is only in Midr Rabbonon. You have already said Vayechulu, Midr Oraisa in Shul, in the middle of Tefillah. We repeat it again at home so that it should be for the Bnei Bayis, for the family, in Kiddush Elabah Mokam Suda, so we make it over wine, but it's only the Rabbonon. Chavetz Chaim explains in Simon Reish Ayin Aleph in Shulchan Aruch that it's, it's the Rabbonon. What is the statement of Vayichul? What does it mean when you say Vayichul Hashemayim Ba'oretz? On Shul, on Shabbos, or at home, over the table? Anybody who says it, Ma le'olav ha'kosov ki'ilu nase shutov la'kodesh baruchu v'maisa b'reishis. It's as if you become a partner with the Almighty in the creation of the world at the, at the time of creation. Not that it was completed, but they completed. And actually points out there in the Gemara in Shabbos, who's Vayechulu? HaKadosh Baruch Hu and this individual. You'll ask a question, how does a person become a partner of the Almighty in the creation of the world just by saying Vayechulu? The Mahasho explains on that Gemara that it refers to the testimony that a Jew says that HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the world, and he, he recognizes that. The shudfus, the partnership, is the evidence which a Jew gives when he makes Kiddush. That's the meaning of the partnership. Let me read out to you from the Novi, from the prophet Yeshaya, page 43, Mem Gimel. Kol agoyim. Mem Gimel Pasuk Tes, all the nations of the world, Nik Pitzu Yachtov, they all gather together, United Nations, a convention in the world of the world leaders of Germany, of America, of France, of, of, uh, of, of all the nations of the world come together. Who of all these nations, when they come together, can ever say what's going to happen in the future? And one can do that. They don't discuss what's going to happen. They can just decide how to take action of what has evolved, but not what's going to happen. They have no idea what they're talking about. 
but you, the Bnei Yisrael, atem edai, you are my witnesses, Noam Hashem, ve'avdi asher bocharti leman teidu v'taminu li, believe in me, v'tovinu ki ani hu, says the Novi, on behalf of Hashem, and believe and understand that I am the one, kula fonai lo noitza el ve'acharai lo yeh, there isn't anybody else, it's me, anoichi, anoichi Hashem, I am the one, says the Novi, and there isn't anybody other, any other salvation. There's nothing strange or foreign. You are my witnesses, and I am the Almighty, says the Yalkut on this. And if you don't, then I'm not Kale. If you don't testify, when am I Kale? When you testify, and if you don't testify, I'm not Kale. Why? Because in the whole world, in China, in Australia, in Russia, no one recognizes the Almighty but the Jewish nation. We are the Aden, and without us, he's not recognized, he's not known. And therefore, that's the meaning of the shudfus, of the partnership in the creation of the world, because the fact that you in your home prepare the house in order to make Shabbos, and you make Kiddush in your house, you're recognizing the Anikel. That's the power of Kiddush on Shabbos. That's what it means, the Shutfus. No one else does that. And that's the enormous, spectacular event of what exactly happens in the home on Shabbos. That's the power of Kiddush, the setting of Kiddush on Shabbos. By the way, Al Pi Halocha. We pass can actually in Reishayin Aleph in the Shulchan Aruch, the Machaba brings down that if a person is hungry or thirsty, you can't have anything once it comes to the time of, of Shabbos. You must make Kiddush and uh, you can't eat anything until you've made Kiddush first of all. It's a little bit like a Leila Seder when we sit down and after we make Kiddush, we don't eat a meal straight away. We start with the Haggadah, Avodim Hayinu Lefaro B'Mitzrayim. Why? Because there's an agenda first before you eat the meal on, on Friday night, on Seder night. You must first tell about Sipu Yetzirah Mitzrayim. There's an agenda. There's an agenda also every single Friday night before you sit down and eat a meal. The agenda is Kiddush. Kiddush means to recognize the, the, the nature of who we are. We are the Adim of our Kodesh Baruch Hu, And it's almost Kavyochal as if he's dependent on us. Because if not, no one else recognizes him. We are the only ones. In reality, just to make the scene even more almost overwhelming and significant. I brought two scenes. The scene of the creation of a, an inanimate, animate product, vegetation and man, and then the man in his technology, technological world, the world of computers, the world of communication, factories, banking, schools, science, travel, all the world which man has made, and skyscrapers. That, but that's, in reality, also very limited. It's not the full story. Look in Mizmo Shiliyoim HaShabbos, which we say every Shabbos Friday night, there's more than that. Mizmo Shiliyoim HaShabbos, look, what is the song? This was said by Oda Morishan, the first man, when he saw the whole world in front of him and he saw the greatness of the creation. This is what he said. Toib lahoidois lashem ulazame lashimcho elioim. Says the Malbim. What is the meaning of Toib lahoidois? It's good to thank Hashem. He refers to the Hashkocha Potis, individual supervision of each person. Ulazam el Shimcha Elion is the creation. And the whole of the chapter talks about Magodl Masercha Hagreto, your acts, which means acts of nature. Ma'oid Onku Machshvaisercha is the depth behind it. And in reality, we've almost haven't taken notice in the two first two scenes that we brought out of the world of supervision, which is enormous in the creation. Just that is a point of emunah. It's almost as if we can say, which is the greatest draw, the greatest pull to appreciate what Kiddush is? Is it the world of creation or the world of ongoing maintenance and supervision in the world, which HaKadosh Baruch Hu does? Maybe we can answer using the Eben Ezra when he says in the Aser Sadibos in the Ten Commandments, the words are, Why doesn't it say, I am Hashem who created the world? 
that Hashem created the world was a historical fact. It's true, the creation carries on and the momentum of everything to keep on going. HaKadosh Baruch Hu maintains everything every second. But the dynamic force of bringing the Jewish nation out of Egypt is an act of Hashkocha, of his supervision, which is continuous. That is a very dynamic point in appreciating what Kiddush is. By Echad Elokim Bayamish, he finished his work, everything has been laid out as Hashem wanted it in the world. That's the meaning of the Hashkocha, the maintenance, the supervision, the direction which HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives. Much more. We say on Shabbos morning, Nishmas. If you look carefully at Nishmas, Nishmas doesn't, it talks about the greatness of HaKadosh Baruch Hu and the relationship of man towards the Almighty, but it doesn't go into great detail about the creation. The actions that HaKadosh Baruch Hu does continually in the maintenance of the world, but it doesn't talk about the creation. There is a I must say, Eloka Kobrios, Adon Kol Tolodos, who created the world. Adon Kol Tolodos refers to Rebbe Wuchem, says it refers to all the features, the characteristics inside the world. But most of Nishmas is talking about Mimitzrayim, Gautonim, Mibesavodim. It's not the aspect and the, the mindset of the creation and what man has done, which we brought in the first and the second scene, but really there should be another scene, the scene of the supervision in the world, which HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives. And if you really want to go all the way, and we've missed out, perhaps the most important of all, and that is the whole, the blueprint of the world, which HaKadosh Baruch Hu also provided. He didn't just set the world in creation, he gave the Torah, and the aspects of the mitzvahs, and Torah, Torah, Baal Pen, Torah, Shebich Sav, and all. There's a whole maintenance of how the world should really be run, according to the Torah. So if we really want to create the full impact of we must develop a much wider appreciation, not just of the creation, scene one, or man, scene two, man in his technological world and his achievements and his buildings and his, uh, his writings and his finances. That's only two scenes. The scene of the Hashkocha, of how Kodesh Baruch supervises the world and manages the world and then the whole world of Torah and the blueprint which he provided. This all is fed into the This is all his work which is behind it all. And therefore, coming to some sort of conclusion of these points, Kiddush on Lel Shabbos lifts the veil and the Balabais comes in you're bringing in the Rebona Shalom, the Almighty, into his world. All the scenes that go on throughout the world, and no one does this, except the Jewish nation. I once heard from Rav Malinowitz here in, in Mamat Bet Shemesh, a beautiful point. He mentioned that it's a miracle that no one else in the world recognizes Shabbos and its importance, except the Jewish nation. And when the Gemara says in the Shabbos, Matona Toiva Yeshli Boilomai, I have a gift to give to the Jewish nation. And Shabbos is the name, no one else keeps Shabbos. The Christians keep Sunday. The Muslims keep Friday. It's a miracle that they don't touch on Shabbos. Why? But the, the Bible they believe in, and the Bible says seven days. Seven days on the seventh day he rested. The seventh day is only Shabbos. No, no, but it's a miracle, and it is, that they don't rest on Saturday, they rest on Sunday or Friday and only the Jewish people, and that's the meaning of the treasure of the gift which the Jewish nation has given. The preservation of Shabbos is our treasure, and not any other religion at all. And even though the Bible, which is recognized by all nations that HaKadosh Baruch Hu bested on the seventh day, it's, it's given to the B'nai Yisrael, and that's the enormous, spectacular event of Kiddush on Shabbos. We celebrate this event, and we, if we wouldn't do it, then he wouldn't be recognized as being the Melech, as being the King, as being the Creator. And that's the greatness of the event of preparing the house for Shabbos and everything that we do. We can take this further and look at the Chinuch 
in the mitzvah Lamad Aleph. And this point needs almost refining a little bit more to appreciate what's behind Kiddush on Shabbos. Says the Chinuch, Ledaber mitzvah Lamad Aleph. And I'd like to carefully look at the words of the Chinuch because he's telling us something specifically about the power of speech. Maybe we should start first with the Gemara in Shabbos, the second main one, before, after the Shutfas, the partnership, which HaKadosh Baruch Hu has given to B'nai Yisrael, you are my partners. The next is, Omar Rabbi Eloza, Minay Shehadibu Kamaisa. Where do you know that when you say something, it's as if something was actually done and performed? The power of the spoken word. Shenema, Vidvar Hashem, Shamaim Nasu. HaKadosh Baruch Hu said, Bayoyim Elokim Yor, and there was all through the power of speech how Kodesh Baruch created, but we have the same power. The Kedusha that we bring into the home by saying Kiddush, now look at the mitzvah in the Chinuch, L'daber dvorim b'yoyim ha-shabbos, b'hach nososoi, b'chein b'yitziyosoi. A detail in making Kiddush on Shabbos is the speech, the power of expressing v'yechulu. And also have dollar afterwards. Sheyeh bohem zecher gedulas hayoyim, a mention of the greatness of the day. Who malosa b'havdolosa lo shabbos mishaor yomim shelafonu pola achorav. But how is it done? Zochor es yom hashabbos lekad shoy. It specific kolayma zochreihu zecher lekedusha mishorashay hamitzvah zu kedesh nisayre mitoych ma'isa ze. You must say it out. It's not enough to think it out. But you must say it. The power of speech creates the Kedusha. And that's a very significant point. Because it's not enough that Shabbos just comes in. You must mention it. And through the power of speech, which is really the power of what man has, and clearly so, as we mentioned before in the second, in the the concept of the power of a Jew who has prayer, it's much more than just bringing in Shabbos. He testifies with his mouth. He speaks it out. The power of Kedusha is there in what you say. Just incidentally, in Halacha, the Shulchan Aruch brings out in Simon Reish Ein Aleph that this should be done as soon as possible. Miad, in Sif Aleph in the Shulchan Aruch, that a person should make it straight away. That's not the same, for example, by Havdalah. If it's delayed, it's delayed. But Kiddush should really be done as soon as possible. The delay of Havdalah is the covet of Shabbos, that you don't want to rush away Shabbos. Supposing during the week you're sitting down at a meal and you began before, uh, before sunset, you don't have to break the Shema or to daven Mayriv if you began before already. Then you can say Mayriv afterwards and Shema after the meal, which might be an hour later or two hours later. But by Kiddush you are obliged to as soon as the day begins. There's an urgency when Shabbos comes in. Of course, if the wife maybe is resting or Aniyim should come to the house, then obviously you wait for them. But whatever is possible to make Kiddush as early as possible, this Eidus, this witness, this testifying to Shabbos must be done at the earliest possibility. But what's behind it all? We're into the realm of Odom HaMakadesh. A man, through his power of speech, can create Kedusha. We know that in the times of the Temple, the Beis Amikdosh, a person would bring a sacrifice and say he's making, and then it would become Kodesh through his speech. A man marries a woman, Hareat Mekudeshesli, through what? Through his speech. He's saying that. The power of speech creates this aura of Kedusha, and this is what is necessary. It's a prerequisite for Kiddush. You must zachreihu alayayin. You must mention it over the wine. Wine is taken specifically because the, the, the chashivas of wine, the importance of wine is the rabbana, it's not the raisa, as we mentioned previously. In the Shemana Esra, you, um, uh, you makayim the mitzvah of kiddush, of, of vayichulu, but we repeat it again at the home for the Bnei Bayis. But the significance of saying something out is a very powerful aspect of the setting on Leil Shabbos. To say it out. Some people have a custom to stand, some sit down, whatever your minhag is, your custom, but the significance of the, of the saying the words is, is behind it all. Maybe we can just explain a little bit on 
every time in Shulon, we, we say the words, Kadosh, 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 Hashem Tzavokos, Meloi Chol HaOretz What is the impact of these words? It's from the Pasuk in Yeshaya, Pevet Vov. And in Volatzion, we actually explain what these words are. The Korazel Zevi Omar, in Volatzion, Kadosh, 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 Um Mekablin Dei Midein Ba'omim Kadosh Bishmei Meima, Ilo'o Beis Shechintei. The first Kadosh refers to the Kedusha of Shamayim, which a man expresses and recognizes. Kadish al Ava over at Gavute. The second Kadosh refers to the Kedusha on the ground of everything that there is. We recognize the creation as Hashem instigated it, and that is a level of Kedusha. Kadish lo Olam lo Meo Maya is forever, and the Kedusha should continue on HaKadosh Baruch Hu. But that's an expression which we use, Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. We create by our speech that atmosphere of Kedusha, and it's dependent on our and our comments that we make, the power of Kedusha. Maybe we can add here that, of course, making Kiddush on Lel Shabbos has nothing to do with how great a Talmud Chochem you are, or if your last name is, I don't know, Soloveitchik, or Feinstein, or Kanievsky, or, or whoever you might be. It's not Every Jew has this responsibility to bring Shabbos into his home, of, of whatever level, and to understand and appreciate the words one is saying. And this Kedusha is... Whoever and forever, and of course women also obliged. The Halach and Shlim and Reisha and Aleph, Sif Beis, the Shulchan Aruch brings down, of course, women are duty bound just like men are. All the acts of Zohar Veshoma, we learn since a woman is Mokhiyev in all the Lois assays of not doing any Malachas on Shabbos, so also by Kiddush, she's Mokhiyev. Maybe we should mention that uh, this point we mentioned about not eating anything beforehand, if a woman is, is extremely weak and needs to eat something and she can't wait, she could actually make a condition when lighting the candles on El Shabbos that she'll light the candles but eat something and afterwards be Makabo Shabbos. Apihalocha, that's allowed. She makes a condition at the time of lighting the nail, it's lighting that she's going to eat later and then be Makabo. And one is allowed to do that in the time of need or urgency when you feel weak and maybe you've been busy all of Shabbos preparing for the Shabbos. But this is the, the, the scene, the setting behind the Kiddush on every Erev Shabbos in our home. Having said that, and expressed that point, and understood what the consequences are, maybe let's go on now to the third Ma'amor in the Gemara in Shabbos, Daf Kuf Yotes. And the Gemara then says, Omar Rav Chista, the first was the shut was the partnership between HaKadosh Baruch Hu and every Jew, and that means the Edus, the testimony that we mentioned from the Novi and Yeshaya. The second is the power of the speech of the word, which, as we mentioned, is the Kiddush, by saying it out. And now look at this next Mema. Omar Rav Christo, Omar Maruka. Kol HaMispalel Be'erev Shabbos. Anybody who dabbles on Erev Shabbos. Ba'omer Vayechulu. In Shul, you say Vayechulu. Shnei Ma'alochei HaShores HaMalavin Lo La'odam Manichim Yedeim Al Roishoi. Two malochim come along and put their hands on your head and any transgression that you have done should be removed and the hate should be repented, should be atoned for. Meaning, uh, the Maosho explains on this Gemara what's the relevance of atonement of Kapora to saying Vayechulu. And it's the time when Odom Rishain was granted a pardon in Gan Eden, and therefore the person who recognizes on Erev Shabbos, the Eidos of HaKadosh Baruch and mentions the Eidos, that is the same as the power of Odom Rishon, who was forgiven at this time. This is a